Goodbye, Emily Dietz. It was a song I wrote for Lydia that never made it into any script, any rehearsal, any reading, any moment of the show. Never arrived. Um, again, the mists of time have fogged my brain and I can't remember exactly why, but I think it was because I either wanted, either wanted it to be at the moment... Um, uh, Originally, in the, i got to explain this. In the netherworld, in the original script, Lydia meets her mum. She meets Emily and they have a conversation. And it's quite, you know, a sad letting go conversation. But And they and they sang a song together um, uh, that got cut. It's not even in this demo thing because, anyway, you don't need to know. Um, so this was not for that moment. I think it was actually conceived at the very end of the show. But of course, we had, you know, um, Jump in the Line, Shake Sonora. So it couldn't um, couldn't use it, really. There was just nowhere for it to go. It's one of those things where I just got into a mood about the idea of Lydia having kind of been ignored at the funeral, running away from that moment, never really believing that her mother was gone, never accepting her mother's death, manifesting this dead mom kind of character that she spoke to in the sky all the way through, that there needed to be a moment where she properly let go of her mother and said, I, I, I've got to keep going, but I love you and I love all the things about me that were made possible because of you, but I'm moving forward with these people now and I'm never going to forget you. Now, I those ideas made it into Home, for example, but they really landed... Um, they really landed in the closing number, which is Shake Sonora. So when we did it in Washington, D.C., Shake Sonora was just the song. And I had this weird thing because, like, to be perfectly honest, when you're adapting a movie and it's got, a, it's got like, famous songs in it that everybody knows have to be in the musical, it's a real bummer because, you know, you've got these songs that, that have such a kind of a lived cultural history people have them kind of etched onto their dna they know them inside out and then you're coming and going oh here's a whole bunch of songs you've never heard before in your life and you're just hearing for the first time right now and you've just got in real time to try and digest it and i'm going to put that right up against the song that has been popular for 50 well you know, it was 30 years the film had been out by the time we put beetlejuice the musical out but i think the song was about 60 years old and so my way of dealing with that was just ignore, just just whenever those songs came up, I just kind of like, if not literally, maybe literally, just sort of left the room. I just sort of checked out. I was like, this is not my department. You know, I, I obviously Chris Kukul is in the mu- running this music department. He's orchestrating the songs. He's finding a great way through them. Doesn't need a composer on it. It's it's composed. It exists, right? So I was just like, that's these are the bits that I, I just pay no attention to. But one thing that was big that changed between DC and um, Broadway was the fact that we just we had a very messy, confusing story. The story was in there, but it was getting lost. And we were like, well, you know, Lydia's want needs to be this notion of home, that she thinks that home is with her mother, and when her mother dies... Um, that her home is removed from her, but in her macabre way, she thinks that she can recreate that home by reconnecting with her mother in the netherworld, by essentially dying to be with her mother. And then learns in the netherworld that that is not the way to go, that the way to honour her mother's memory is by moving forward with the people in her life and creating a new home and, and redefining what home means to her. So it wasn't really landing in DC, this shakes and aura moment. Um, you know, we wanted. You know, she had a little look up to the up up in the sky where dead mom's been all night, and a little bit of a knowing smile, and we got a kind of a you know an esoteric idea that she was going to be okay. But then I was like, maybe I need to stop ignoring this pre-existing song and lean into it. And so I, you know, I I wrote this concept of um of putting um what did I put in there? Uh, the the chorus of Dead Mom with new lyrics in it. And then also, to be honest, the idea of Daylight Come, and Want to Go Home, the Banana Boat song, the idea about that wanting to be, uh, about someone wanting to go home, that connection to our thematic through line did not occur to me until um, we were in rehearsals for Broadway. That was And that's, that's four years it took to make that connection. I mean, what an idiot. 
Anyway, that's a big digression. But to say that there was a whole bunch of things that wanted to be said, they were originally in this song that we couldn't find one singular place for, but I did like it. Um, So, yeah, this is Goodbye, Emily Dietz. <laughs> 